The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. So we start out the show like we usually do, looking at the German DAX on a daily. As you can see, we made a 50% retracement, and uh, so far we backed off a little bit. If we take a look at this 50% retracement just a little closer uh, by looking at a 15-minute chart, you'll be able to see here uh, everything is good here at the family dentist. Thank you for asking. We're we're doing uh, we're doing just fine. You'll notice that uh, this morning we had a 38% retracement in the DAX. We backed off oh probably about oh I think about 60 about 80 pips. And then we went back and touched that same number again when that bullish number on the jobs came out, which is uh, always helping the market. So we'll. Keep a close eye on that. Now, the next one we want to take a look at is the FTSE. We'll get up here, and we're going to talk about the dollar in just a minute. I got a special thing to talk about the dollar, folks. Hold on a second. This is the FTSE. You'll see that we made a 50% uh, retracement uh, on the 15th. This is an hourly chart. We haven't been able to do anything. It's just been flat, so there's really nothing to look at there. You don't know which way it's going to go, so there's not a pattern to even you know, to uh, that you could even like. So there's really nothing that uh, you want to be able to do with that. But let's just get to, uh, to the uh, something that I think is very important. Now, one of the things uh, doing this business that I do for so many years is I've been able to work with some really nice young men and women over the years, a total of about 1,200 of them over the past 38 years. But I want to show you the sequence of three charts that uh, these two gentlemen from across the pond over there have done, and I think it's just absolutely an incredible chart. If you have any feeling about pattern recognition, whether good or bad, I just want to run this by you so you can take a take a look at it here. Now, this goes back to 1976, folks, when uh, we were uh, in the Deutsche, actually it was the Deutschmark was the big thing. And if you had bought a, a car during the 70s, uh, any time during the 70s, uh, well, up through till about 78, um, you, you actually made money because the price of the car was based in Deutschmarks. And so if you bought a Mercedes for 12000 the price of the car went up because of the price of the Deutschmark. Back in 72, the only way you could trade foreign exchange was through the banks, and you had to have a million-dollar account. This is how Bruce Kovner uh, got started. Uh, for, you know, he's a very, very famous guy that traded out of the Conti office there in Westwood, and uh, he was a foreign exchange trader, and basically— uh, he was very, very bullish uh, from the 70s all the way through. I don't know what he, you know, he, of course, he's a multi-billionaire now. But look, look at this. Look at the swings in the euro, folks. This is the euro versus the U.S. dollar. You'll see the two blue swings, very equal. Then you can see, look at the three drive to a top there when the euro hit 144. Look how, look how perfectly symmetrical it is. And if you wanted to defy human nature and go back and count the number of bars, and this is a monthly chart, folks. So these patterns, not only do they work on a 15-minute chart, but they work on a monthly chart, too. And it doesn't make any difference what's in the news out there, whether it's a coronavirus, a, you know, um, the um, SARS or, you know, the uh, hog flu, swine flu. It could be anything. Wars, famine, they all do the same thing. You'll notice that uh, the market, after it made the three drive to a top pattern, it came down to a 61% retracement of the low from 1984. That actually is 1985. That's when they had the Plaza Accord uh, in uh, New York when they did some uh, things. This when the pound was trading at 85. Uh, we were in uh, La, uh, Shell Beach at that time, but Avila Beach. And I remember that weekend because uh, Byron had come out to visit us. He was going salmon fishing with uh, with John and some of his buddies. <laughs> no way they're going to get me out in that boat. But um, they were. Uh, he, he had gone along the pound uh, on that Friday 
assuming that the they were going to do something positive for the British pound, and boy, oh boy, did they ever. So that was a very big one. Now, if you move down, you'll see uh, when we got up to the high here in the pound uh, in 2008, it was trading at 161, and then you can see the three red arrows there. That's nothing more than a 135 pattern. You know, and here again, defy human nature. Go in and look at this and count the bars and see how accurate they are. And you can see the trend has been going down, you know, ever since, since 2008. We've just been going lower and lower. And they posed the question to me, if this trend line breaks, what will happen to the euro? Well, folks, the euro, it will probably have a move down to where we were when we took out the lows in 2000. That would take the euro down to about uh, 70. That would be my guess. Uh, that's quite a ways from where it is now. Uh, we have to get the euro below the 104 level, uh, and then that would start to move down. You can just measure the simple ABCDs here in the euro. From the high at 161, we came all the way down you know, to that 10, uh, 104 level, and then we rallied up to a 3.8 true retracement, if you'll remember, uh, early uh, in 2018 up to that 125 and if you just just did the just did the simple math on that it's going to take you down to 70 and believe me folks you know now the euro really didn't start until 99 so uh, this this dollar index is based on uh, you know what the US dollar was doing uh, in, in this thing, it's not it ver because the euro really didn't start until '99. That's when it really got its start. It might have been a little earlier, but there was there, the count, the countries weren't together until that time. The reason why I know that is my grandson was born in August of 2000, and that's when all the countries had came out with their currencies and their coins. And uh, one of my students from uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, who owns a bank there, sent my grandson a complete set of all countries and their coinage. And some of them are just absolutely beautiful. The ones from Italy, uh, of course, are related to Leonardo da Vinci. And, uh, oh, gosh, they're just absolutely beautiful. I I'm, I know they're quite valuable now, but um, at that time, they were just at face value. And, uh, you know, at, in 2000, you can see the euro was down around 85. So it was rel relatively cheap. And, of course, it's trading at, what, 109 right in that area right now. So this is what I think is going to happen or what they think is going to happen if we break that. I believe, look at that nice trend line. That's a beautiful trend line. It has uh, one, two, three, four hits along the way. Now, there's always a possibility that it could break out to the upside because it is in an uptrend. You have higher bottoms, higher tops over the past 25, 30 years. So you have to say that it is in an uptrend. But if that breaks, and if that breaks, that would be below 104, in the euro, um, believe me, between 109 and 104, we'll get somebody's attention. But if we break, break below that, that's what you'd be watching as far as a uh, you know big trend reversal. If you, if you want to just to give it, go back to 1998, folks, you can see the little tiny rally it had, the very small rally when it was trading around that one, uh, 119, 120 level that was sitting right at a, a ABCD retracement level. And then once we broke that, we broke all all the way down, you know, to 80. So we went from 120 to 80. That's 40 handles, folks. That's a, those are huge moves. That makes that makes the moves in the stock market look faint. So we'll take a little break here. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other tigers and tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're going to switch from foreign exchange. Um, we're going to show you the same um, chart setups that we see in uh, some of the uh, dollar indexes. Now we're going to switch over to the uh, West, West Texas crude. This also comes from the young fellows over across the pond. This is crude oil going back uh, about uh, 18 years. Uh, if you'll notice here, we had that high in 2008 when we hit $147 a barrel. If you remember on that day, Goldman Sachs came out with a special report saying that $200 crude oil was almost a certainty. And guess who was selling up there, folks? You'll never guess. If you guess Goldman Sachs, you'll get a QP deal. Okay, let's look. Let's see. The market broke down. You'll notice it rallied up, uh, went from $30 and rallied up to $100. 10, uh, you know, nice little ABCD pattern. But what I'm trying to, what these gentlemen are trying to show us, and I think it's just absolutely spot on here, is that we could be looking at a major bottom here uh, in the crude oil. The reason why I say that is, if you notice this week, we took out the lows in the May contract by about 10 or 15 cents. The low so far has been uh, one, excuse me, 19, um, 20, I believe, has been the low. We're trading about a buck a barrel higher than that. But there's a big backwardation, folks. The June contract is trading at 27. So there's a big switch in this. So you got to pay attention. What these oil traders are doing is they're assuming that this. Uh, uh, virus thing is going to be history by the time June comes and the price of gasoline is going to go higher. Well, I, I've had the same tank of gas here for a month, and uh, so I haven't been using any gas at all, but gas is under $2 a barrel here uh, in Tucson. But the real important thing here is the fact that you'll notice these lines, these blue lines that these gentlemen drove, those are normal classic trend lines. And all you're doing when you're doing these trend lines is what you want to do is to try to match them with Fibonacci numbers, 127, 1.618 on expansion, and 618 and 786 on, on uh, retracements. And this tells us that it has a massive, massive movement down here where we have that big ABCD that we posted on our daily charts uh, at, at $20. And in fact, the low actually went to 19 uh, 1920. So it's right in that area. So there's a possibility that we could be looking at a potential, uh, you know, major bottom here. And when you stop and think what they've done to this, 
this uh, oil market during the time that uh, we've had this thing. I think we've gone from 36 to to 19 uh, dollars a barrel. Um, it's actually held up relatively well. I mean, look at the June is trading at 27. Whether that means anything or not, you know, I'm not really sure. But uh, this is a, a very interesting chart that you want to be able to look at, and we'll be able to see that. So we'll see what's going on. Uh, someone's asking a question. Does anybody have a favorite oil stock to watch? Uh, and I, I, you'd probably look at Exxon Mobil would be my guess. Uh, that would be one that I think, and that's one of the biggest ones, Exxon Mobil. Is uh, is very very good. Probably you could look at uh, Chevron, but I think Exxon Mobil is probably uh, one of the bigger ones. And you know, on a sad note, do you realize, folks, we're going to lose J C Penney very shortly? It's trading for 22 cents a, a share. Uh, just a few years ago, it was trading for uh, 70 billion. And now it's trading for 70 million. You talk about uh, a demise of a, of a one great company at one time, James Cash Penny, J.C. Penny. Um, back when I was in graduate school, we studied uh, James Cash Penny and how he built everything up. And I'm sure, uh, looking down at it, he's probably saying, "My goodness, what happened here?" And then all he has to do, folks, is to get on a map of the world and go south of the United States and go far far south till they get down to Brazil and there's a big jungle down there and that big jungle jungle is called Amazon and that's what it is yes you're right Duffy JC Penny he had soup for lunch every day very, very, it's very cool I didn't, didn't think anybody remember that okay um, let's move on uh, does, it, does anybody have any tip-offs on which of the, of the um, stocks to look at as far as a uh, um, see what do you really you get a pension from uh, from JC Penny will that pension will that still uh, be going Gator if they go tapioca I know um, I had the problem with uh, Drexel at that time let's uh, take a look you know one of the things I've always wanted to do I don't know if we can do it here uh, but I, I, I went into Basil's show yesterday which was really good uh, if you don't get if you didn't get a chance to go to it it's been archived so it was really great seven hours with him is is uh, is really really quite good but I was thinking of maybe doing a four-hour live trading for TFNN. And uh, my deal was uh, what I would do is it would be a guarantee that if you lost, uh, you would get your money back. And um, I would be happy to uh, fund that if we uh, if we were to uh, have a loss. But I believe that, uh, you know, we would be able to uh, make a little money looking at it. But I'm going to, uh, oh, there's a uh, the slumber shade would be a good one. Yeah. Uh, that uh, slumber shade that is a good one. I think that's the one that uh, what is his name? J uh, Dick Cheney is uh, involved with heavily. I think that's an interesting one. But here's a trade to look at, folks. I don't know. This is what we call a very very low risk uh, setup. If it does happen, haven't checked uh, where it is right now. But uh, you'll notice here we we missed that buy at that 177 level. That's where we had the uh, we were trying to buy it at 177. We missed that by 11 pips and it's rallied. Uh, four handles now uh, up to this 181.16. That 181.16 is what I'm watching for a potential sale because at that point, you're going to be making a 78% retracement of the high that we made back on April the 3rd. Now, I don't know what the bonds are doing so far this morning because I can't check them, but I'm going to right now. We've only been as high as 14, and my order is setting there at 16. Whether that's going to mean anything or not, you know, I'm not really sure. Sure, but uh, we did have another one this morning that was really nice. If you folks like, uh, if you guys like uh, pattern recognition and you like uh, the gold market, some of these uh, look pretty good. And you'll notice here that uh, we did have a uh, very nice move here uh, in the gold market. We went up exactly. This is an hourly, uh, thirty-minute chart, folks. And you see, we went up there to that sixty-one percent retracement there at uh, one sixty-seven. The high being one sixty-eight. Uh, we stayed there for a whole hour, and now we're trading at uh, 17.46 uh, on the downside. So that's a uh, you know very substantial move, and it was uh, it was also um, 
set up by you know by looking at the AI program of looking at and if I do you know if I do this thing where I do the uh, if I do some live trading uh, what I would do is I would not use the AI what I would like to do is just to to show the folks how I use the patterns and the ratios together and look at like four or five markets over four hours I'm not going to be there for four hours all the time but you know I would be in there showing them you know the types of stuff that I that I did I used to do this years ago when we had a trading room at Ensign but frankly, I just got too busy, and I wouldn't be able to do this very often. I would do it maybe once, just to see if it's uh, see if it's uh, doing on this. Uh. Okay, all right, let's move on here, and we'll see how the rest of these things are moving. Okay, uh, let's keep an eye on um, one other one. Let's see, we watch, we're watching these bonds here at 181.16, uh, and we'll see 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, uh, this is uh, from Bloomberg. It's basically the S&P index showing the different years of 1929, 2000, and 2007. Folks, if you can make any sense out of this chart, you know, may the force be with you, because I certainly can't. 
Each of these markets act a little bit differently, so you follow them separately, just no different than if you're following silver versus gold. Any of those things are very, very important, in my opinion, as you look at some of these things. So keep in mind that it is uh, each one of these is separate, and you should look at it separately. That, as a technician, that's all, all you really have to go for. You're looking at that bar chart, and as if the prices are going higher, there's more buyers. If prices are going lower, there's more sellers. We keep an eye on the open interest just to see what's happening. And as we've said over here the last uh, week or more, that this move up in gold is a very, very suspect because of the fact that the open interest is not increasing and it should be given the fact that it would be very um, it should be very bullish if it does that but it is not doing that so you have to pay attention to that if nothing else um, someone asked the question what happens uh, if I don't get filled in the bonds at 16 and the high so far is uh, in the June bonds is 181.14 my order is setting at 181.16 I'm risking 10 ticks at that point which is $300 that's so uh, you're looking at a contract that's worth a, you know, quite a bit, about $140,000, and yet you don't have to risk very much. And that's what I'm doing. And it is a huge contract, folks. It's the second largest of any of the futures contracts that are traded. The, the Treasury notes, which is the 10-year uh, note, that one is traded more. It's, uh, it's actually has a larger open interest but it doesn't have the volatility that the 30-year Treasury bond does. So that's important. The difference between the two is the 10-year note is the one where they determine what are your interest rates on your car, your mortgage, and, you, well, credit cards. They just move those uh, wherever they want. But for the normal things that you that you look for, that's where they get is through the uh, uh, the 10-year Treasury no, not the 30-year bond. And mortgages now are, I believe they're under 3%. So if you got a chance to remortgage your house down in here, I certainly would do that. Now, uh, Ray Dalio was on uh, CNBC yesterday talking about it, and he thought one of the most foolish investments that you could do would be to buy U.S. Treasury bonds. Just the fact that the Fed is printing so much money that these bonds down the road are not going to be uh, worth very much. That that was his opinion. And, you know, of course, everybody has uh, an opinion, and they're like armpits. They usually smell. So, And that includes mine, too. So it's, remember, you're the one who has to decide whether you buy or sell and what you want to do with it. But uh, now that's the problem with the, the thing. Is, uh, he's probably long TBT. They're very good, Duffy. <laughs> we'll see if that's the case. We'll we'll go that. Okay. Well, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck and looks like a duck, it's probably a duck. Okay, let's move on here and uh, see a couple of things. I wanted to give a high salute here to uh, Larry Williams. If you'll remember uh, that he was uh, very, very bullish, the stock market here, when we were bottoming down there uh, in late March. He came out with a very special report, and he talked about, you know, the fact that the fear and greed, all this stuff. I'm just going to run few of, uh, through a few of his charts because uh, they, they were that good. And I, I think we should remind ourselves that, you know, everybody has an opinion. And uh, the main thing that he was trying to tell you that the Fed was going to come in here and, and try to uh, hold this market up. And that's exactly what had happened when it was making that three drive to a bottom pattern down there. He was talking about the Fed. Have, they have inflation forecasts, GDP forecasts, unemployment, manufacturing, stock history, and uh, including a full report on full moon and, and influences. So the reason why, the reason why I know that is much to my shock when I published the book Astro Cycles, The Trader's Viewpoint with uh, Ed Dobson at Trader's Press, Ed called me and he said, you know, he said, we have four orders for four of the four of the banks uh, of the banks uh, the Fed for the 12 Fed banks. So I, I was shocked that they uh, they had the book. So it was uh, it was and they didn't return it. That's the good part. Now, remember, <laughs> Mark, Mark Douglas told me once, he said, look, when you write these books, he said, anytime someone asks you to sell the book, make and they ask you to sign it, make sure you sign it. And I said, well, I would enjoy that. He said, yeah. He said, but remember, if they sign it, they can't return the book. I know he was joking, but it was still still rather funny. So we'll we'll watch this as we go through here with some of these charts that Larry came up. Here's where he was uh, talking about the quantitative easing coming in, uh, and that, that certainly happened. You can see, of course, this uh, 
this red line has gone, you know, his balance sheet thing has gone off the, the roof now with the 7,000. Did uh, I have a question because someone's uh, asked me in my in our neighborhood, uh, those of you that are, are available, have, have you received your checks from the government? Your $1,200 checks. Anybody have received them? Because uh, several of my neighbors had not, and I was just curious because uh, I had not heard that. So, well, they're probably a little late. When you figure they're going to send out 130 million checks, it's going to be uh, a little bit. But, uh, well, that's good. Well, that, that means you don't have to write two checks, Duffy. <laughs> okay, let's move on here. Okay, good. So it's 50-50 pretty much. There we go. All right, that's good. All right, let's move on the next one here and uh okay and that's uh all righty all right okay all right let's move on. if you have any questions folks it's 877-927-6648 i want to get into a couple other of these the things that uh, larry talked about and he was extremely bullish on the gold looking for you know price objective up near 1800 we got to 1790 so we've certainly uh, re, re, re visited that and believe me if if the fed keeps pumping it like this i don't see any reason why gold can't make uh, higher than the old high at 1923 that was back in uh, 2011 it's certainly possible to do that and uh, if you'll notice here that we should be under a little bit of pressure here is what he's looking at. I will put the new mod up, uh, Paul, but uh, I, it's not really changed very much. There should be some resistance there at uh, at sixty dollars uh, a barrel uh, at, at per <laughs> sixty dollars uh, uh, per share. Uh, I believe I still have that new mod somewhere in here. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. No, I don't anymore. Nope. Uh, but anyway, that was a uh, that that measure to 62. We got to uh, or to 60, and it got to 61 and a half. I don't know what the high will be. The high today should be not much higher than uh, than 50 uh, 59 dollars. Uh, 59 dollars would be my high. I guess in uh, Newmont. I don't know where it's going to open, but uh, you know we've dropped twenty dollars in gold since uh, the re the report came out. So it's probably going to even actually uh, open lower. So we'll have to uh, do that, uh, you know, one day at a time. So we'll pay close attention to that. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to. Uh, you know, to take a look at them. And we've got a, a really nice chart here from our good friend uh, Shane Smolian, and I'm going to bring it up to let you see it. It's about the bonds, and it's right up here at that level. Let's just take a quick look at it so you folks can look at it together. Oh, dear, I messed that one up, didn't I? There we go. Give me, give me a second to get into the room, and then we'll be able to see it. Hold on one second. There you go. Then we've got a break coming up here, and uh, back in uh, 877 If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in a tax opportunity zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. 
The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS, Direction's Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, folks, as a post-tax, non-tax day gift, we have our good friend Marshall has been kind enough to uh, send us the link for Larry Williams' newest uh, video where he talks about FIB references and stuff. So it's listed right in there. Uh, if you don't have it, um, you can probably go to YouTube and get it. Or if you don't, just drop me an email and I'll post it to you so that you could uh, watch it. But uh, he's, a, he's a really nice guy. I've known him, oh my gosh, since 1960. Five when we were trading at uh, <laughs> the old Clayton brokerage there at the old Howard Hughes building, and but that was before the McCulloch Oil building was built. Anyway, let's move on to uh, one of the other charts that Larry talked about here, and then we'll get on to a couple other things that people had questions about. And this is the um, this is the cycle projection of what he's looking at in the stock market. Now you'll notice here that. Uh, We've uh, we we had a um, a bottom down there on the end of March. He was looking for a rally into uh, April 1st, and here we are on the 16th. And this is what we call an inversion because it just kept going straight up. The cycle is right, but it most probably inverted. If this is in fact the case, the fact that it happens to be one day from April 15th is worthy of a little note. But uh, keep in mind that these cycles do switch back and forth. Why the invert or not, folks? I really don't know. Uh, but you know what? Nobody else does either. So uh, pay attention to that. It would be, uh, you know, it would be interesting to see, you know, how these things unfold as we look at these things each day. Okay. Um, what was the next one? Oh, I know what I wanted to do. Give me one second, folks. I got to do a little bit of uh, a little tiny bit of, of uh, uh, work for the old cowboy himself. Hold on a second here. And then we'll get right back here to take a look at it. And the next one we want to look at, of course, is the gold chart. I wanted to bring this up to your attention because this is also from the, the two fellows across the pond. A very interesting gold chart. Now, this is uh, very yeah, – thanks, Marshall, for putting it in. I, I really appreciate that. If you'll, if you'll put this up here um, – well, by the way, Marshall, I meant to tell you, Guadalajara is having a takeout, including the margaritas. So uh, if you get down here, we can take it out. We can't eat together, but we could get it. Okay, let's look at the gold. This is going back um, to late February. There again, you can see that line, how it touches all of these lines. And that's what technical analysis is. It basically how it finds parallel channels. That's nothing more than a 1.27 expansion up there at 1750 uh, in the spot gold. And here we're trading around 1742 right now, the low we made the other day, 1731. I think we're going to be taking that out, but we'll have to, to wait and see. We'll be able to look out that Jim Jones. <laughs> yeah, he sure did. Uh, was it that Jim Jones with the guy with the Kool-Aid? 
I don't even remember who, if that was, uh, yeah, Free Kool-Aid, that was him for, for sure. All right, someone asked a question about the hogs, folks. Someday hogs are going to have a hell of a move. And the problem is we have major backwardation in there. You can see the difference between the June, August, and October contracts. They're already figuring in that there's going to be one heck of a meat shortage coming up because the little piggies are not uh, making honeymoon, uh, you know, honeymoon salad, you know, lettuce alone with no dressing. Well, they're not doing that in pigs and they're not doing that in hogs. And that means down the road, there's going to be some expensive meat coming down the road. How, how much and when, I don't know. But the nearby contracts will probably not be able to do that because there's just not enough lead time. But as you look at the back ends, you have to watch that. And that's why we have, you know, Rich Anderson and Simonly on the team to uh, let us know that, look, things are starting to look a little better. And then you can get into some of these things, you know, without risking an arm and a leg. I think that's what uh, that's what's important when you're doing this. It's not about how much money you make, it's how much money you don't lose. And there we go. Have to look at that to see uh, how things are going on. All righty. Now, let's take a quick look here. I want to double check to see how we are in our, uh, see how we're doing here in the uh, Treasury bonds. Ooh, we're getting close, boys and girls. Keep, the, keep, it, keep it in there. In fact, this is doing exactly what you want it to do. Let's blow this up so we can see it. This is doing exactly what you want it to see. This is a little two cents worth, whether it means anything. Remember, you're paying for it for two cents, and uh, that is over at 13. We're, get, we're getting close. Let's bring this up here and take a look at it. Uh, see, everybody should do this. The reason why, uh-oh, i got to make a little change here. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Okay. There is, they we're looking at the June bonds up there at uh, 181. Uh, 16 is the number. The actual number is 181.19. I'm shading it by three ticks. We just ticked up to 181.14. And also, what you want to do, folks, uh, oh, oh, I think we got just got filled. Boy, by golly. We, oh, I was going to say, you want to put a CIC order in on this one, folks. And that means uh, cancel if close. See, and we just... Uh, we just hit the 61% retracement there at 18. So here's where we hold just a minute. I got to get my napkin out to wipe the egg off my face because this one probably is going to go up. Now you put a 10 point stop on this at 26. If you're wrong, what you do is you move on to the next uh, the next little uh, uh, soiree or uh, whatever you want to call it. But uh, this is a this is a type of trade that doesn't uh, doesn't require a great deal of um, imagination you're trading against a 78 percent retracement in a downtrend and whether that uh, is going to be helpful or not uh, i really don't know all i can say is that it's going to be interesting to see if the thing is going to be uh, uh if it's going to work or not it's wait a minute folks it's trading at 181.15 so you cover your position there you make 31.25 less four dollars you made 27 dollars that's the end of the day. If you did 100 contracts, you made $2,700.50. And who would do less than 100 contracts? I don't know anybody that would do less. All right, let's move on to the uh, euro on a little bit smaller time frame because I believe this euro is heading down to, uh, I don't know if we're going to get to that uh, 70 level, but you'll notice here as we look at the euro, we've had nothing but lower highs here. And if we'll get this up, you'll see that this is uh, nothing more than a 15-minute uh, uh, chart over the last several days. But we've got the lower highs coming in. And uh, we had an almost perfect 61% retracement there. We missed it by 10 pips at that 109.40 uh, level. And then we've come down and we're basically, you know, in a small bottom uh, today, but with a very, very heavily biased to the downside. And I believe... That's where we're going to be uh, going as we as we go through looking at some of these things. So whether that means anything or not, I don't know. But let's look at the euro on just a little bit longer time frame. Now, on the daily basis, you'll be able to see here uh, that we're in a downtrend. And it's been a substantial one since March the 9th, you know, when all the, the proverbial, you know, what hit the fan. We have lower tops in here. I couldn't even make a 61% retracement. We missed that one by about 40 pips. And the, the one we had, the seven-day rally here, we missed that one by 10 pips. So it's been missing, but uh, it still has negative bias 
you know, to the downside. So those are just a few of the things that we're watching here in the old uh, foreign exchange part of TFNN. And uh, we have any questions. Uh, Al said there's a few lines open. He just let me know there's a few lines open, 877-927-6648. We'll be right back after we pay a few bills. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls to sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back. And uh, one of the questions that's been posed during the break is, uh, how do I factor in fundamentals? Well, it must be from a new listener because uh, fundamentals are not part of what I do. Uh, I try not to listen to the news. Uh, uh, I get some feedback, of course, from you know colleagues and friends. But uh, you know, I first of all, two reasons: one, I don't understand it, and two, I don't believe them, because uh, I've seen so many times. Well, look, look what's happened here. We've got the most bearish possible news you could ever see in the stock market. We're down what 30 points, 30 uh, percent. In, in the shortest period of time ever, I posted that chart uh, from Bloomberg. I mean, uh, what's you know, and look what's happened. The markets rallied 
uh, it's rallied more than 50 percent back, very similar to what we did in uh, 1929. And I don't know if this is a 1929 environment or not, but you know what? Nobody else does either. If you go back and look at other bubbles, look at this, folks, just to see where we've been here. You know, this is going back to, you know, when I started at uh, at Drexel Burnham in 76. Look at these things that we've gone through. We had that big move in gold. That was when we had the oil, the first oil crisis. Then we had the Nikkei Dow that went to um, almost 40,000. And that was the, uh, you know, big break here. And then we had the, the uh, 97 run where we had the uh, tech, the dot com. And then we had the housing bubble. And uh, the Chinese market broke, and then look what's happened here. We've had a, a period since 09. We went actually um, 11 years with basically nothing other than a one-way Corrigan. So, um, you know, this is due for some type of correction. Whether it'll be a big one or not, I don't know. But the way it's acting is the way that the Fed is priming the pump. You know, anything has happened. So make sure that you use stops in here when you're doing this because the Fed can come in at any time and make a, uh, a big difference. You know, that's the, the real thing that you want to pay attention to as you're looking at these things. So tomorrow is a happy Friday. And we'll have a special show. I'm going to try to look at some of the foreign exchange uh, cross rates that we don't usually talk about, the Canadian dollar, the Australian dollar. Uh, also, the um, well, we already covered the British pound. We're going to look at the British pound a little closer. And also, we're going to take a look at probably the Swiss franc if we have anything. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless.